My name is Paul Rakoski, and I'm the director of the Finance and Management Department for the City of Columbus. And it's my pleasure today to be a part of the rollout of the Mayor's 2013 operating budget. And it's also my pleasure to introduce my boss, uh, the Mayor of the great City of Columbus, Ohio, Mayor Michael B. Coleman. Since that wasn't on, you got to do it again. <laughs> Thanks, Paul, uh, and I appreciate your work uh, over the years. You've been a, a great finance director uh, during the good times and the bad times. And I want to acknowledge Priscilla Tyson and Herschel Craig, all members of City Council, uh, for their support uh, and for their hard work uh, every year because uh, none of this is – None of this can happen without a great council and great leaders on city council, and they've been doing a fabulous job for the city and uh, our residents. And, Paul, thank you and your whole finance team. They've been doing what's necessary. And, uh, of course, City Auditor Hugh Dorian uh, has been a great mentor to me over the years. I'm so grateful for everything he's done and continues to do and will do for the city of Columbus. Our union leadership uh, over there, they have been uh, great partners uh, with the city of Columbus. Uh, and, and I'm so grateful for your friendship, uh, your pushback from time to time. Uh, but in the, at the end of the day, uh, you have done what was right for the citizens of Columbus and that's what matters. And what's right for the citizens is always right for your membership as well. So thank you so much for everything. Today uh, represents my 13th city budget and my 13th balanced, balanced city budget that I'm presenting to our citizens. It is uh, $766 million dollars. Uh, that we're proposing to City Council. Uh, hold up one of those things. Hold up. It's uh, more pages than you can imagine of uh, budgetary information uh, that uh, will guide the city, and it's a very important document. Uh, and the reason why it's so important is because it does guide what we do in the city of Columbus and how we spend the, the, the citizens and the taxpayers' resources. And, and uh, this is a budget that is not only balanced, but it maintains basic neighborhood services and strengthens our quality of life in the city. It provides safety to our residents. It creates jobs. And it saves money in anticipation of years ahead. Now, what I want to talk about today is where we are today, uh, how we got to where we are today, and what this budget reflects for the future. Here's where we are today. The city of Columbus is a city that works. We're a city that works for its people. We're a city that puts its people to work. A city where its services works work for our neighborhoods, a city where our neighborhoods, in fact, work, a city where our financial stability works for those who live here today and those who will be here tomorrow. In fact, this is a budget that works for our residents. You see, in the year 2000, the year I took office, the population of the city of Columbus was about 711,000 people. We had 9,000, approximately 9,000 city employees. And here we are some 13 years later, and the population of the city of Columbus is now just about 800,000 people. And our city employees are 8,000 employees. So what am I saying? Well, the population of our city has increased by 12%, and the number of city employees has been reduced by 11%. We're a smaller government in that way, 
with a larger population to serve. You see, not long ago, and I remember this so well because I, along with all of my great directors right here, have done a fabulous, fabulous job, had many sleepless nights. Our city was in a financial crisis. And rather than panic and make knee-jerk reactions, we all came together and said, how are we going to get through this? And so we put together a plan to strengthen our economy and save resources, provide for short-term cuts, long-term reforms, and raise new revenue. And I said then that as a result of this crisis and all the work we had to do to slim things down, to be more efficient as a city, will make the city of Columbus a better city once we get out of the recession. And indeed, we are a better city. And we're not yet out of the recession. You see, Columbus is now a national model. We're a national model for job creation, quality of life, and civic cooperation. You see, we're being recognized around the country. New York Times Magazine said that the main reason the entire state of Ohio was doing so much better than other states around the country was primarily because of the economic resurgence of the city of Columbus. I didn't say that. New York Times Magazine said that. Time Magazine, now it's a different publication, wrote, now quote, Columbus has gone beyond partisan politics and supply-side nonsense to create real growth. Once the election is over, I suspect many people will start paying more attention to this city and the many others around the country that are quietly moving ahead while Washington remains gridlocked. I didn't say that. Time magazine said that. You see, over the past few months, uh, Columbus has been designated as uh, one of the 20 best cities, uh, according to Forbes, one of the 25 best places for businesses and careers, uh, the seventh strongest economy, uh, another uh, organization called Columbus, one of the 21 smartest cities in the world, in the entire world. I didn't say this. Somebody else said this. Another publication said that Columbus was the eighth best city for tech jobs. And Forbes magazine said that Columbus was the best city in the nation for working mothers. All right, working mothers. We still have more work to do, though. A lot more work to do. And despite being a better city today than we have been, there's a lot yet to do. We have a lot of work to do. We can't be complacent. I talked to my directors just before we got out here, and I thanked them for all their hard work and their management and their vision. And, but I said, even though we're doing a lot better, we can't sit back. We can't be complacent because there's still a lot more to do. So where are we going with this budget? Well, let me tell you. We're going to start with safety because we spend – about 70% of our resources on safety in the city of Columbus. And even as our population is growing, now the largest population in the, city of Col in the state of Ohio, the FBI says that crime in every category is going down. Population's up, crime down. Violent crime, down. Aggravated assaults, down. Homicides, down. Property crime, down. Motor vehicle thefts, down. But population up. More people, less crime. We're working hard at this. And I want to thank uh, all the things and all the people that work so hard on this. I thank our firefighters and I, I thank our police officers. I thank our law enforcement for doing what is necessary to keep the criminals at bay, not to say that crime is gone, but we're working the best we can. 
And when the FBI reported the crime was down, I didn't get not one call from the media. But I cannot tell you how many calls I got a couple of years ago from some of you when crime was inching up. So now I have the opportunity to say crime is down. And I hope you report that because you have it. So things I want, well, I didn't read it. I didn't see it. I know you did. All right. Don't feel bad about it. I'm not attacking you. <laughs> uh, now, here are the things we're trying to do. Focus on enforcement. We continue to do that. Technology is important in crime fighting. Uh, we've done a great job in that. In fact, we're expanding cameras in neighborhoods. We found that it's working. We've tested it, uh, and it continues to work. Uh, neighborhoods are in demand are demanding for it now, and we're doing the best we can with the resources we have. And something that we've done differently uh, over the past three years that we haven't done as much before then, because we saw that spike in crime a few years ago, and thanks to the media, they really got me going on this, so I compliment you, uh, is intervention. Intervention in the in young people's lives, and through the ATS program and other things, and also supporting our block grant programs, a coalition of nonviolence in Columbus. Now you know one crime is too many, and we have a lot of crime. We got to continue to fight it. We got to continue to fight it. So this year's budget, we're going to uh have new safety classes that will produce 90 new police officers and 35 new firefighters. And it will put the combined total of safety officers and firefighters together, uh, 3,454 uniformed safety personnel in the city of Columbus. We're going to continue with the strike force, the new summer strike force, and we're going to continue to fight against gang violence in our city. Uh, we have found uh, that as a strike force is tweaked every year by our law enforcement and our, our neighborhoods, we continue to change it a little bit each year uh, so that we can be more responsive to gang violence because the gangs sort of figured out along the way. And so we try to surprise them and try to do some things differently, but we still have the, the general concept of a summer strike force. And then there's apps. Application for Pride, Purpose, and Success. Now, that's the intervention effort. And that has been working in the city of Columbus. Because what we've done is we've opened up some rec centers for expanded hours. We've brought in 3,900 young people that used to be on the streets into our rec centers. We went out and got them and brought them in and figured out ways to bring them into our rec centers so they become uh, 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 places of hope and opportunity. And we develop community inter intervention teams. Community intervention teams that, that went out and got in front of these young people in their faces and tried to uh, prevent them before, from making a criminal act or a violent act. And that has been successful as well. And we're going to continue with that effort. We've also had some community festivals where we brought people together in some of our toughest neighborhoods and trying to build up confidence in the neighborhood that things will be great. We're funding 28 recreation centers year-round, seven city swimming pools. Uh, we're adding two new spray grounds at Blackburn and Indian Mountain Rec Center to the ones we have at Barrett Rec Center and at Bicentennial Park. We've worked really hard at economic development in the city of Columbus for the past several years. It's been a real strong focus because for every job that is created in the city of Columbus, 2.5% of their income comes to the city of Columbus so it can provide safety, recreation, roads, trash collection, and now recycling and other things. So we, we continue to focus on it, and we've yielded oh, just since last year the beginning of last year, 3,800 new jobs while retaining 4,400 existing jobs in the city of Columbus. 
And some of you have been to some of those events, press conferences, and I just want to remind you of some of them. 525 new jobs from Quantum Health, 300 new jobs from MSC Industrial Direct, 200 new jobs from DSW, 150 jobs from Contact Us, 100 new jobs from Residential Finance Corporation, and the list goes on and on and on. And we haven't yet finished the year because I'm expecting some major job announcements between now and the end of the year as well. Our unemployment rate is 5.7 percent. You see that chart at the far corner uh, represents the unemployment rate just before the recession and how high it got in the years since then and how that line continues to go down. And in fact, the unemployment rate today is slightly better than what it was before we went into, re into the recession. And we're becoming known nationwide as one of the best cities for jobs in the Midwest. And we've become a brain magnet for young people around America. We're going to continue these efforts. We're going to expand these efforts. We're going to work with uh, regional economic development strategies, advanced logistics, small business development. The city council is working really hard on issues of small business. We appreciate that. And technology-based companies. We'll continue to grow our downtown and housing and retail and parking and transportation and recreation, all those things that bring people to our city. This budget will also reallocate the bed tax that in order for it to feed the economic engine of job creation in Columbus. Now, several years ago, we said we're going to build a new hotel, a new convention hotel. And that hotel officially opens this weekend, I think. I've been there many times. I've been having, they're still working on it. But this weekend, hopefully, they'll be all done with it. And uh, that hotel, we want to fill it up along with every other hotel in the city of Columbus. Because when people visit the city of Columbus, they pay what's called a bed tax. And that bed tax is distributed uh, to various functions in our government, and we want to feed the engine that creates jobs, and that's Experience Columbus, to ensure that more jobs and more visitors come into the city of Columbus. Why is that important? It's because uh, convention business and business travelers have spent $7.8 billion at local businesses, generating $1 billion in local, state, and federal tax revenue right here in the city of Columbus. And the visitor industry supports 61,000 jobs in the city of Columbus. And that represents about 9% of all jobs in Columbus and Franklin County. And so reallocating that bed tax will allow Experience Columbus to go out and bring more conventions and bring more people to the city who in turn will spend money and spend money that help create jobs in the city of Columbus. And we're also going to continue to invest in Columbus 2020, where our goal is that by 2020, we will create, and 2020 is not very long away, it's eight more years from now. And we expect to create 150,000 new jobs, and we expect to increase incomes, per capita income, by 30% in eight years. And some of the things I want to see happen is helping to uh, expand our Columbus Film Commission. We want that Film Commission to work because we shouldn't uh, uh, simply say that films can be made in other parts of our country, Cleveland, Cincinnati, and not in the city of Columbus. In fact, we got more talent in our city right here, more opportunities for film right here in our city than any of those cities. And we have to go out and get them. And we want that industry to look at Columbus as a place where film can be made. And it doesn't have to be the big blockbuster because those only come along every once in a while. We want to see an industry created in the city. 
And so uh, we go to set aside $100,000 through GCAC to help the Film Commission create those jobs and our reputation around the country as a, a place to, for, for uh, a film and opportunities. I've talked about our work in East Franklinton. You, you've all talked about it, and, and we've all seen it, but we need an engine there as well. And we're creating a, a corporation. The name of that corporation is called uh, the Next Generation Development Corporation. The Next Generation Development Corporation needs to be funded to be the catalyst for uh, 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 real estate development all over the city. We're going to focus first in Franklinton. East Franklinton, and we're going to set aside $500,000 for that effort uh, in East Franklinton, and, but its role will be around the city as well as time goes on. Human services is important. We have uh, set aside about $18 million for human services in the city of Columbus, uh, and we're set aside an additional $360,000 from the bed tax so that they can meet the human service needs of our city. You know, one of the things we have to work on in the city is that while the employment situation of our city is getting better, and the quality of life in our city overall is getting better, one of the concerns I have is that poverty is an issue we have to continue to fight against. And so, uh, and so we want to make sure that the human services community has additional resources it's never enough, but additional resources to uh, reach out to the weakest among us uh, in the process as well. So it includes some $5 million for health care, $4 million for homelessness, uh, and another effort that I'm very, very proud of uh, is uh, an effort that we started last year called Restoration Academy. We're going to continue Restoration Academy. We're going to set aside, I think, 250000 about $250,000 for Restoration Academy. And it's the smallest program we've created, but it has the biggest hearted results. What's Restoration Academy? It is former felons who's been released from prison and who have redeemed themselves in prison and want to uh, begin walking down the right path and be a productive citizen. So this past year, uh, we established this Restoration Academy, which is a rigorous effort uh, where we set 15 former felons uh, in a rigorous study environment to get them job ready. And we told them that not all of them would get through it. In fact, I think we had 12 graduates out of the 15. And they've all gone on to achieve jobs. And see, the issue here is sometimes that when people are released from prison, they go out into the community and they don't get jobs, they're not ready for employment, they end up committing a crime against our citizens and end up back in prison. And that cycle needs to break. We'll continue. And, and, and a new area that we're going to focus on next year is education. Now, we're working really hard on providing jobs for people in the city of Columbus. You've heard about some of that success. But all too often, too many of our young people are not ready for the jobs that are created. And we have to make sure that when they graduate from high school, that they do one of four things. Go to college, get a job, go to the military, or start a business. All too often, one of those four things isn't being followed. So I want to make sure that every child in Columbus will have an opportunity to succeed and an opportunity for quality education in our city and we're going to continue to focus on that. We're going to create a commission uh, later on, uh, before the end of the year. And that commission, along with Andy Ginther, who's played a substantial role in this, 
uh, that commission will be charged with how do we identify the best practices to make our city the best place in this nation to educate young people. We hope to have a role for the private sector. We hope to have a role for the city of Columbus. We'll have best practices for our school system, and we'll have a civic agenda that we want everybody to follow. It's a time for us to stack hands in the city of Columbus to achieve education for all of our kids in the city. So we've been very successful in managing our budget and being fiscally responsible. And what have we done so far? Well, thanks to City Council, thanks to Hugh Dorian, thanks to Paul Rakowski, thanks to all of us, we are a AAA rated city. And what does that mean? That means that we have the best credit rating among three credit rating agencies that judge these things. And we're the uh, best credit rating among a city of our size in the entire nation. It's something we're proud of. We're going to continue to maintain that credit rating because it's so important. It saves us millions of dollars when we issue bonds. Uh, since 2001, we have spent $125 million less than what was budgeted since 2001. And this year, we have saved $12 million, spent $12 million less than what was budgeted. The amount was budgeted. We made sure we spent less. And we've applied those resources to future years, and we continue to do that this year. We went to the public. We asked the public to raise taxes, and they did. We promised them that we would work to save $100 million in pension and health care costs of our employees. We have now saved $210 million in pension and health care costs going forward for the next several years. And I thank our unions for stepping up on that. So what are we going to do with this year's budget? Well, we're going to continue with fiscal responsibility. We made a promise that uh, we, when we borrowed money from the rainy day fund a few years ago, we almost spent it all, that we would work hard to replace our rainy day fund and have it fully repaid back by 2014. Well, this budget, we're going to accelerate, accelerate that and have it all repaid back this year in 2013, up to $50 million. And then, that's not all. We're going to set a new policy in the city of Columbus, and that is that we're going to, over the next five years, increase the rainy day fund from $50 million to $75 million. Now, why is this important? Because I've been the mayor through its toughest times and its best times. And we have to guard against the cycles of economic volatility. In 2001, after 9-11, that was the worst recession since the Depression. And then after the financial markets in, in uh, uh, 2009, uh, that was, in fact, worse than 2001. And that was the worst recession since the Depression. And we had to draw upon our rainy day fund. And a rainy day fund is just that, putting money away in the event of a rainy day. And for some future mayor, maybe for this mayor, you never know what's going to happen. You never know whether a terrorist, economic conditions, Wall Street, uh, circumstances that are out of our control may cause us to dip in that rainy day. And so this is a guard against that. It's our savings account just in case we need it. And I think we need to increase it. I want to increase it to $75 million because I don't know when there'll be a rainy day. I don't know how there'll be a rainy day. 
But I guarantee you there will be a rainy day one day. And we have to make sure that on that rainy day that the citizens of Columbus are ready. So let's increase that amount to $75 million. In addition, uh, I want to take $5 million and apply it not to 2013, but to 2014, to the Basic Neighborhood Services Fund. Why apply money this year to two years from now? Well, the reason is because the state budget cuts are, are actually happen, are concluded this year. The state tax ends at the end of 2012. And we'll get a little bit of money, $4 million in 2013, that was in the pipeline in 2012. But in 2014, that will have no more uh, estate tax coming from the state to the city of Columbus or to any city in the state. So there will be a hole in 2014, and I want to fill it today in 2014. So uh, we're going to continue to try to be fiscally responsible in our city. You know, I'm very excited by this budget. You know, over the years, you've seen me come up here, and I've talked about all the cuts we've had to make. I've talked about uh, all the circumstances that we were going to close down rec centers. Uh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. This is a year that we plan for the future and really get our city uh, working, working well. I'm proud of how far we've come in our city. Uh, I'm proud of our leaders to my left, uh, but I'm mostly proud of the city of Columbus and its residents because this truly is the best city in the nation to live, to work, and to raise a, uh, and raise a family. We have a lot to do, a lot of work to do, and uh, we know our challenges. And we have many challenges. And we have to keep our eye uh, on the ball and work hard to, to fight for our residents. What I'll do is I'll take some questions, and, uh, and then after that we'll do one-on-ones. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. But we've been very conservative about them because we don't have an experience with uh, a casino in Columbus. And we do welcome those revenues into our budget, but we don't have a long-term experience with them. So we've been conservative about what they mean to our city. A lot of cities, frankly, depend upon them, and that is their lifeblood. And if they don't get those casino revenues, the world will fall apart for that community. I don't want us to be in a position of uh, relying so much on the casino revenues, although they are welcome and we want that money into our city, uh, that we can't function without them. Uh, and so uh, we've been very conservative in our projections of casino revenues. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, the more to the city, the better. But I just can't predict with great accuracy right now what that, what those amounts will be. It's all a, it's all a guess right now. Any other questions? Okay. You want to, you anything else on that? Okay. All right. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate it.